This video is for those who are new to the treble clef and for those who are looking for a refresher in helping to identify notes on the treble clef stave. Whatever reason you're here, you've probably seen the five lines on which the musical notes sit. This is called the stave. Until a clef is placed at the very beginning of the stave, and there's loads of clefs to choose from, we do not know what to call the notes placed on the stave. For example, this note is C, if I use this unusual looking clef, but it is a D if I use this one. Therefore, the use of a clef is absolutely essential, so always make sure you add a clef at the start of the stave and each subsequent line. We're concentrating on the treble clef, so let's pop one at the start of our stave. It's also known as the G clef, as it wraps itself around the line, which is the note G, which I've highlighted in red here. Now that you've put a clef at the start of the stave, we are now ready to learn the note names. The first thing to recognise is that notes can either sit in a space, that's the space between two lines, like the two lines I've highlighted here, like this, or notes are attached to a line, like this. Let's look at the notes in the spaces first. In the first space at the bottom is F, the next space up is A, the next space up is C, and the final space is E. Notes in the spaces helpfully spell out the word face. The notes on the lines starting from the bottom are as follows, E, then G, B, D and F. Unfortunately, these letters don't spell a word, so musicians use a phrase to help them remember the order. The most common phrase I hear is, every good boy deserves football, but I've heard many more such as, every green bus drives fast. You get the idea, so feel free to come up with your own helpful phrase if you prefer. Let's put all of these notes onto just one stave. Now, you may be aware that in music, we only use the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. This is sometimes known as the musical alphabet. When we get to G, we go back to the beginning of the alphabet, A. Therefore, here's the G. And as we've reached the end of the musical alphabet, the note after it is an A. This pattern then continues. So if I added this note, as it sits after the F, we take the next note in the musical alphabet, which is G. The pattern obviously goes backwards as well. If I added this note, as it is before the E, we take the previous note of the musical alphabet. So it's a D. Before we go any further, just be aware that on this stave, I've only shown the note names below crotchets or quarter notes. You're probably aware that notes come in all different shapes like these. It doesn't matter what the note looks like, the important thing to notice is where the note head is sitting, that's the sort of black blob on the crotchet or a quarter note. So we already know that the first note is an F, as the note head is sitting in the bottom space of the stave. The next note will also be an F, as its note head is sitting in the same space. The next note will also be an F, and so will this one. The important thing to remember is no matter what type of note sits in the space, it'll always be an F when using treble clef. Before we look at treble clef notes above and below those on screen, I'm just going to move all of these notes to the top of the screen. You can pause this video at any time and you can use this stave of notes to help you check any of the notes we've looked at so far. Firstly, let's move the notes on the lines. Remember, every good boy deserves football. And then the notes in the spaces. These helpfully spell face. And finally, the D and the G, which we looked at a few moments ago. Music doesn't just stop at the top G of the stave. The pattern keeps on rising. But as we've run out of lines on the stave, we add what we call ledger lines to notes. These are small little lines which help musicians interpret notes above and below the stave. This is an A. Remember, after G, we go back to the beginning of the musical alphabet. Hence, this is an A. You can see that there is a line that cuts through it. This is a ledger line. The ledger line acts like an additional line above the stave, but rather than drawing the full line, we use it just for the notes that need them. We can use the same ledger line for the note B. See how the note head sits above the ledger line, whereas for A, the ledger line cuts through the middle. We can keep going. Here is a C. Now we've had to add another ledger line so that the highest ledger line cuts through the note head. Any guesses to what this note would be? Well, 
it's a D as it comes after the C. Now there's no limit to how many ledger lines you can use, but any more than let's say four or five, it can make the music a little tricky to read. Let's add these notes to our list at the top of the screen. We can also use ledger lines below the stave. So this note below the D is C. Notice that we've added a ledger line. That's obviously very important, otherwise the note would just appear as if it's floating below the stave. In fact, this is actually a very important C. It's known as middle C. Now, I don't need to worry about this now, but it will help you in other music theory work if you remember that this is middle C. A note below this is B. Notice how the note head sits below the ledger line. And finally, an A would require an additional ledger line. So, before we finish, let's add these last few notes to our list at the top of the screen. And a quick reminder of how to find the first few notes on the treble clef. Firstly, remember that the notes in the spaces, they spell face. Whereas the notes on the lines require you to remember a phrase like, every good boy deserves football. Once you remember these two handy tips, you'll be able to work out all the other notes in no time. I do hope that this video has been useful to you. Good luck with reading notes on the treble clef and thanks for watching.